Hey, good morning, everybody. This is April over at the Resellers Learning Curve. And I am shooting this video today to discuss something I posted in my Facebook group yesterday, but thus far, haven't had any response to it. So I wanna tell you guys out in YouTube land what I'm doing, and I wanna tell you why I'm doing it. Over in my Facebook group, I have started the, what I'm calling, the $50 hour challenge. If you're wondering what that is, here's my thought process. Most people, when they start out in reselling, they're doing it for very practical reasons, meaning they need to make money and this is an easy, viable enough way to make money that people see that the entry can be relatively simple. So it's not a hard business to get into, but I realized that the reason most people get into it is for financial reasons. As such, when people start reselling, very few of them are able just to up and quit their full-time jobs immediately. So the one thing that I want you guys to know is that you can have a very, very successful resale business and still have a day job. All of you guys know I have a day job. So... What I've noticed, and if you purchased and watched my sales breakdown video, having a day job has not decreased my eBay income. It hasn't. But as I said in my group yesterday, what it has done is it has forced me, trained me to be incredibly efficient in, in my sourcing. I guess I'm probably a little bit more efficient in my listing as well, but I'm definitely super efficient in my sourcing. And I don't think that's a bad thing. All of us can walk into a thrift store and spend untold amounts of hours going through every single rack. That's not always your, your best use of time. As such, that's why I am creating this $50 hour challenge. What that means is I want all of you out there, especially those of you who are thinking about getting into reselling to give this a shot. $50 may seem like a lot, but today I'm gonna show you guys some of the items that I got for $50 yesterday. I don't think it'll be all of them. Maybe it'll be all of them. I made two stops on my lunch break yesterday. I stopped at the Goodwill store, <laughs> obviously, because I stopped there twice a day, every single day. I stopped at Goodwill, and then I popped into Uptown Cheapskate which is a consignment store. I don't know if you guys have them in your area. Before we had one here, I would see people post about things they bought at Uptown Cheapskate, and I wondered what that was all about, but I wasn't really sure because we didn't have them. It's akin to a Play-Doh's Closet. I think the age range may be a little bit higher, but not much, not much. They definitely cater to the, the teen, early 20 demographic, and I pop in there every so often. Um, the prices are similar, maybe a little bit lower than you would find at a Play-Doh's Closet, but when I went in yesterday, I didn't think I was gonna find anything because they are doing a winter clearance. So they're clearing out all of their winter items, and whatever's left that's been hanging around for a while, any tags with stickers were 60% off. So of course, I immediately walked back to the men's section because if you know me, that's where I start, is the men's section. And in this store, the men's section is actually one quarter of the store. Three quarters of the store is women's stuff. So I go to the men's section, and a lot of the racks just look really barren. And I can tell that the employees are organizing because everything's been like pushed over to one side of all of the racks. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm not gonna find anything here. I'm not gonna find anything because they've already taken away most of the stuff. And I asked them where they donated to um, and they gave me the name of a charity, which is interesting because I mentioned to them that oftentimes I see their tags in Goodwills, which the two girls that were working thought was really weird, but it's, it's not that weird at all. Because if they're donating things to places and the places feel like they can't use them, then they're gonna just donate them to Goodwill. So I think that's what's happening with Uptown Cheapskate. So on my lunch break, I made two stops. I stopped at Goodwill and Uptown Cheapskate, and I wanna show you guys what I got. Um, once again, this is the $50 hour. So you have one hour and 50 bucks. 
what do you do? And like I said before, um, most people get into this for financial reasons. They still have a day job, but it seems overwhelming and it seems like this isn't something that you can do with a job or it's not something you can do if you have health concerns. But I'm doing the $50 hour challenge because I wanna show you guys that with one hour of your time, you can actually do pretty well. So to start, I'm gonna start with a couple of items that I have here that aren't listed. I'm holding myself accountable when it comes to listing and I've been doing really really good with it so for the most part every day anything I buy I try to list by the end of that day I have a goal for myself on the days that I'm working in the evenings I try to list at least five items and that's because my assistant my friend Mikita is off right now and she's been off for a second and she'll be back soon hopefully fingers crossed but until she gets back I'm handling all of my listings right now so in order to keep adding new things to market and to keep the the eBay flow going I'm listing myself so these are the two things that I didn't list last night that I picked up yesterday one of them is a sweater that I wasn't sure if it was going to do well but I bought it because it's kind of my son's size and if I can't sell it or don't sell it then it would be for him I think this is a men's this is a men's sweater it's a hoodie actually and I'm gonna show you the tag the brand is Vince which is a really awesome women's brand but these sweaters do really well in men's so it had a this was $12.99 at Uptown Cheapskate but it was 60% off so I'll probably pay Hmm. I don't know five six bucks for it my math is not my strong suit I'm gonna tell you that now so if you guys ever hear me do math in my head it's always gonna be very suspect because math is not my strong suit but this vent sweater is it's really amazingly soft so this is 25% baby camel hair and 50% wool, 25% nylon. So it's really soft because it's baby camel hair. I'm not sure exactly how that differs from camel hair, but you guys know me. I'll know how baby camel hair differs from camel hair by the end of the day, because I'm a nerd. I'm particularly a research nerd, so I always end up looking into these things. So that's a vent sweater. I looked it up last night. I'll be able to get anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks for that sweater, which is super, super awesome, considering that I paid five or six bucks. The next thing I got, which once again, I bought for my son. I wasn't necessarily planning on selling. This is a Henley top. And it's also by Vince. Um, this was initially $7. And so 60% off of seven, it was like what, three, four bucks tops, three bucks. Um, this is kind of big, but quite frankly, I might keep it. I might keep it. I've been trying to do better with not keeping clothes that aren't for me, meaning that they're not really my size or they're not even women's clothes. That's the number one thing I do that's like a violation, a fashion violation. I wear a ton of stuff that's made for men. <laughs> like my, my beloved Dior Ome coat that I was not trying to let go of even though I knew it was a men's coat and I knew that I needed to to sell it I just I kept rocking that thing I kept rocking it <laughs> because I loved it it was such a nice coat but this top it's a Henley when I looked it up last night I probably will be able to get 25 bucks for this t-shirt if I don't keep it and I think a Henley is a type of t-shirt I can't say for sure but I would consider it to be a t-shirt it's amazingly soft amazingly soft so those are two of the things that I was able to get in my $50 hour. Another thing that I was able to get, and I listed these last night, I picked up these t-shirts. They're both a size 2X. Let me see if I can flip this up and show you guys. And the brand is the Vandal Collective. And I'm going to show you guys this because I had never heard of it. And it's abbreviated VNDL. And both of these actually have different tags. So the Vandal Collective, I can't really figure out what it's all about. It seems to be a more current brand. Um, all of the shirts say Secret Society, made in secret for you. I don't really understand it fully, but these were four bucks. 
they were four bucks each. I actually did the math and checked these last night. So I paid four bucks each for these. They're both for 2X. As such, you guys know me. Less work, more money. So I did a lot on these since I paid four bucks each. I think I listed them at $39.99 and I always run sales. So they probably won't go for that much, but I'm sure that eventually they will sell because they're new with tags and they are size 2X. So I have those two Vandal Collector shirts, which I was able to get in my $50 hour. The next thing I got, which is the last thing that I picked up from Uptown Cheapskate yesterday, and by far the most exciting item I got, is this cardigan, and this is a men's cardigan. Look at this. Isn't that nice? The brand is All Saints. I don't know. That's not focusing correctly. Okay. All Saints. What I happen to know about All Saints that I don't think the good people at Uptown Cheapskate happen to know is that All Saints, they put their tags, the way they hang their tags up here, I could see people taking them off or those just coming off um, with a lot of handling. But just like the women's shirt I found at Goodwill last week, I looked on the inside and I realized that the extra thread pack is still attached. So this hasn't been worn. This is a new without tag sweater. Doing my research online, this probably retailed for 200 bucks. I have it listed right now. I listed it pretty high. I think it's $79.99, but shot in the dark, wild guess. It's probably gonna go in that $50 range is my best guess. And I'll be completely happy with that. This is the only item that I paid full price for at Uptown uh, Cheapskate yesterday, and it was $13.99. So these are all of the clothing things that I was able to get in my $50 hour. And now, moving on to non-clothing items that I picked up from Goodwill. I'm trying to think. Okay, one of them I don't have because it's in my living room. I picked up a vintage travel bar set by Everwear. And it seems really, really old. But what's more important than the age on it is that the, the items in the set seem really, really high quality. One of the flasks was made in Germany. One of the flasks was made in Italy. And it's a old, old set. So I picked up that vintage travel bar by Everywhere. And it was five bucks at Goodwill. Looking online, on eBay specifically, those tend to go from... I would say 40 to $60 is probably what I'll get for that vintage bar, travel bar. So if you guys really, really want to see that, it's just, you can look them up on eBay. There's nothing special about mine, but what stood out to me was the quality of the pieces inside. The fact that they were made overseas and especially in countries like Germany and Italy, that's going to be a valuable, a valuable thing. And somebody out there, even if they're not looking for it, they're going to come across it and think that it's just super, super cool. Like me, I thought it was super, super cool. So I picked it up. It was five bucks. So that was included in my $50 hour. Another item that was included in my $50 um, hour. This is the second most expensive thing I bought yesterday. This was $12.99. And this is a Maytag cordless iron. What's funny about this is as the cashier was checking me out at Goodwill yesterday, she rung it up and she saw that it was $12.99 and said, wow, that must be a really good one. And I said, yeah, it's pretty decent. But then she looked at it a little bit closer and she said, oh, it's cordless? I said, yeah, it is cordless. And then she said that she probably would have bought it herself had she seen it. When I go to Goodwill in the mornings, I try to go around a time that new hard goods and housewares might be coming out. Um, I don't do a ton of clothing sourcing in my early day because I can go in the evenings when I get off work and shop for clothing a little bit more leisurely than I can during the day. So when I go to Goodwill during the day on my lunch break, I always focus on housewares, hard goods, um, whatever they're putting out that's not clothing. And then when I go back in the evening, I, I check out the clothing. So this Maytag cordless iron. I tested this thing last night. OMG. It is pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. So I got this for 13 bucks. They are routinely all the time going on eBay for 
$99 to $130. I have this one listed at $130 because you know I always run sales. Um, my best guess is going to end up going for about 80 bucks. That's what I would take for it. I would take $80 considering that I have $13 into it. But this was a really awesome pickup and I'm pretty sure it's going to do well. And the final thing that I picked up on my $50 hour yesterday, and you guys, this is like one of those things that for some odd reason, they never go away. And I don't pick up big mouth Billy Bass fish if they're used. If you're a yard sale, garage sale person, you probably have seen dozens, hundreds of these because in the, the very late 90s, I think they were released in 99, so in the early 2000s, these were all the rage. There's a lot of movies that use them or reference them and people love them for some reason. But this one was $3.99 and I'm not going to open it right now because it was really difficult for me to get it closed just right last night. But the Big Mouth Billy Bass in new in box condition sells for $75 to $100. And I got this for four bucks yesterday. So this video today is to encourage you guys to get out there. Even if you don't have a ton of money or you don't have a ton of time, just set aside $50. Find that in your budget. Do your research in the store, on site. Do your research and see what you can turn that $50 into. Because just looking at the stuff that I picked up yesterday, let me see here. I would say with the $50 that I spent, I think that I'm probably going to end up making between three and four hundred dollars. And if you can turn fifty dollars into three or four hundred dollars, then I assure you, you are well on your way to being a successful reseller because that's the name of the game. Buy it, flip it, buy it, flip it, list it, ship it. So on that note, I hope I've done a pretty good job of explaining my $50 hour challenge. I hope you guys will join me. If you are watching this video and you're also in the Facebook group, I'm asking, please give it a shot. Give it a shot. If you're used to spending three, four hours in a thrift store, take $50 cash, set a timer on your phone, give yourself one hour and see what you can do. And not only will it give you a sense of confidence to know that if forced, you can prioritize and hit those sections that are going to yield the biggest return, but it's also going to free you up. It's going to free up parts of your day. It's going to make you more efficient. And all of us are always looking for more time. Who's not looking for more time? Who doesn't need more time? So that's the $50 hour. I hope you guys will join me. I'm going to be doing this challenge through the end of the month, through the end of January. So if even if you want to make a video, if you want to make a video, the $50 hour challenge, please do so and tag me in that video so I can see it. And if you don't want to do a video, if you're not a video person, feel free to do the $50 hour challenge and then post your finds or sales to the Facebook group. I will tell you that other items I just showed you, the All Saints cardigan, the Big Mouth Billy Bass and the Maytag Iron got listed last night. Also listed a pair of shoes, um, women's shoes that I didn't pick up on my lunch break. And there was one more thing because I, I really, really try to hold myself to the five items. I can't remember what the last thing was, but I did list five items yesterday. And I'm hoping that some of those sell today. On that note, happy Friday, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Get out there. Get to picking. If you're in this part of the country, East Coast, Midwest, stay safe this weekend. We're expecting bad weather, so stay safe. Um, I'm sure you have a, a listing backlog, so you can work on that this weekend. And as always, let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.